Hello my friends, and welcome back to our continued blind let's play Ace Attorney Dual Destinies for the PS5. My name is The Flightless Bird, this is your Story Beast Gaming Channel, and today we continue the case of Turnabout Academy. I have been gone for a couple days. It's been a while since the last time I played Ace Attorney, because the last Ace Attorney video, as you may have heard, I was not in a good way as far as my illness went. Uh, I don't know what's going on. I just can't seem to beat whatever it is kicking my butt. And doing voices, uh, my voice just, my throat just couldn't handle it. Uh, but it's been a few days. I have medicine and I am ready and ready to come back. I don't know if I'll play the full hour today, but I definitely want to play a little bit. Just try to get back in the groove. You know what I mean? So let's get started, shall we? I hope you're all having a wonderful, fantastic day today. Now, I would have you to stop right there, Sykes Dono. For it is the why of the matter upon which I would have this court focus. What do you mean? Miss Juniper Woods. Uh, yes? What were you doing on the morning of the mock trial? Uh, I was in my dressing room. <laughs> Painting my custom and pleasant paint. Pleasant paint? My design drawing shows twinkling stars on the costume. <coughs> I was going to make the costume shimmer like that by painting the inside fluorescent. What was it again, Floyd? Did your costume have cavities? <laughs> Not fluoride, fluorescent, as in glowing. The paint would make it glow in the dark. <laughs> yes, yes, so you apply that to the inside of the costume, and then... I let it dry for a while because I heard it takes a long time. So I put the costume on my mannequin inside out. Inside out? So then... Hmm, this is a photograph for the inside out costume taken in the dark. Pretty. As you can see, there is a heavy layer of paint over the entire inside surface. If someone were to properly don this costume in this state, the wet paint would get all over their body. Oh yes, I believe it would. Indeed, ergo, the costume was worn the way it was, not by anyone's mistake. But because this was the way it was on the mannequin inside out. Gah! Glowing costume photo added to the court record. A photo of the stage costume taken in a dark room. A coat of fluorescent paint made it glow. Figures he would have a photo. Uh, did we just fall into his trap? Yeah, I bet Blackwell had it all planned out. Still, I think you should give this photo a nice long look. Oh, please tell me you found something that doesn't add up. Check out the chest area. It kind of looks like camp prints to me. Hey, you're right. But Jenny would know better than to touch it while the paint was still wet. Objection. I believe the term to describe your thought process is wishful thinking. After all, let master painters make mistakes while not make amateurs such as the accused. So basically, you're saying my claim requires evidence to back it up? Evidence? That shouldn't be a problem, right? After all, you've come this far. Just because I've come this far doesn't mean I've thought everything through, though. What? You mean you've just been bluffing? Well, what did you expect me to do? I'm sick of losing this guy. <laughs> but you're right. There's only one thing left to do at this point. And that's to present some evidence. Panto. Hmm, a showdown, is it? I gladly accept. The fluorescent paint must have stuck to the hands of whoever touched the costume. And that paint should glow in dark places. So I just need to carefully check every last piece of evidence. The piece of evidence who touched the show... Shows who touched the costume. Alright, well, I guess let's start backwards, right? 
Let's look at this. Okay, there's no way this can be it, right? How about this? Uh, you're a goner. Huh. Blood loss from a deep stab wound inside. Uh, blood loss due to a stab wound to the side of the body marks indicate wrist may have been bound. No other physical damage, but stab wound was very rough. The weapon used to murder Constance Court. Her blood was found on it along with Junie's fingerprints. An extra edition of the school paper that covers the mock trial. Ooh! Oh, look at that! Look at that! Wait, why is hand why is his hands glowing? Oh Yo, this doesn't look good for you, buddy. Oh, I, I need to refresh myself real fast. Apollo Justice. Phoenix Wright. Tracy Wright. First out of means, yes. Constance Court. Gina Poets. You a Connor. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, Bobby Newman! Huh. I am Bobby Fulbright! And you know who I am. Now go away before I could- Alright, alright! Uh, Clavier, Kevin, and Miriam Scudderbutt. Alright, cool. Uh, school newspaper. Hey, interesting. Take a look at the photo where the lights are dimmed and the spotlight is on Miss Woods. Observe Mr. Newman's hands in that photo as he stands at the prosecutor's bench. As you can see, it's glowing, just like Miss Wood's fluorescent paint. Hmm, it's glowing. Quite brightly, I might add. But why would he put on fluorescent plate on his hands so the mock trial, might ask? The answer is he wouldn't, not on purpose. He got it there when he put on the costume. Oh? Let me know. That means, uh, what again? It means the figure photographed of the custom was not our client, Jennifer Woods. It was a classmate, Robin Newman. What? Oh, we are still here. To think, you were actually able to prove that. Well, you never know what's going to happen next. That's the thrill of the court room. <laughs> Hmm, so then. Does that mean that Robin is our man? Ooh, look at that picture. Hmm, well, that's certainly how it looks. That certainly looks like a guilty picture right there. <laughs> Very well. Robin Newman, it is. He is here in the gallery, I trust. Show yourself, I challenge you to a duel. Bye, Scuttlebutt. Will the witness please state his name and occupation? Oh, I'm Robin I want to become a great artist! I practice day and night! Yeah! No! That's not it! I just gotta be sincere, man! So, uh, for occupation, should we put down a pudding artist? No! They must legal can't be seen in the muscular course! This way is the proof of my masculinity! I've been trying to be a muscular for 18 years! Ahem. I assume you'll be cleaning up the pottery you smashed before you leave today. <laughs> it's kind of nice that they actually... They actually acknowledged that someone broke something on the stand and they had to clean it up. Arg! Oh man! Arg! Arg! Hmm. Seems the witness is finally so down. I guess nothing faces the judge after all these years. Hmm. Well, you may proceed with your testimony, Mr. Newman. Specifically, the court wishes to hear why you had fluorescent plate on your hand. When is testimony? Why I touched the costume. 
Hey, what did you see Jennifer in her dress room? But she wasn't there when I walked by that filthy costume. I was like, whoa! The minute it was on, it was about to follow me. I got that big dummy when I caught it. But they never put it on. That's just too bad. Yeah, please do, because he's going to kill my throat. <laughs> Your Honor, I recommend a short therapy session for the witness. Well, Mr. Newman does seem particularly agitated, but, um... Arrgh, 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 no! Not again. What's his problem? I sense at the moment Robert took the stand. The discord in his heart. So you think he might be hiding something? Probably. You ready, Mr. Newman? Let's see what the Moon Matrix can do for you. I may have to tone down his voice. <laughs> just, just pretend that everything I say with him is like ten times louder than what I'm saying. I, I don't even know how I'm gonna do that though. Like when I when I do voices, I just go all in like all the time, and I don't stop. It, it's like I only know one, one path, and that's to fully embody the character. You know what I mean? But this part I could probably do normal voice because we're like in his head, right? So I want to see Juniper in our waiting room. Okay, uh, nothing to press here. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. So I want to see Juniper in the waiting room and there's no emotions here. But she wasn't there and he's shocked that she wasn't there. When I walked by that frilly costume, I was like, whoa. So he's both shocked and happy. The mannequin, it was on, it was about to fall over. Here he's shocked. And I got that pin on me when I caught it. Again, he's shocked. And I never put it on, that's just stupid. Here he's angry. Hmm. So he's happy that he sees the costume. I'm, I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try that. Got it. When he mentioned the stage costume, I sense a sudden powerful feeling of joy. But you can't explain, Mr. Newman. I think I'm actually getting better at these. Wait, what? Why would a frilly scar thing in a long skirt like that make me feel like that? Oh, oh, I, oh, whoa, 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 the way he described that, a long frilly scarf thing and a long skirt. He, he describes it almost like female clothes excites him. I don't know, but you seem awfully interested in that costume for some reason. You didn't happen to put it on, did you? Look, I mean that kind of thing. I'm a dude. And I'm in the braces. I mean, there's, dude. I mean, you don't think Ramen's actually got to think for Juniper's outfit, do you? Oh, come on. Is it obvious? You're enjoying this a bit too much, Athena. No way, man! The man can keep on doing me, so I suck my hands on the bed and stop it. End the story. That's a new piece of information. Time to run an update. Okay. Hmm, even after that update, someone just doesn't feel right here. Do you have anything that could prove this statement contradicts what really happened? Um. Yes. Because he put his hands up to stop it. But the luminescence on the inside of the costume, not the outside. You said the minute kick kept falling towards you, so you stuck your hand out to stop it. If so, then the fingers of your hands would have been pointing outward like this. But that's not what the handprints show. In fact, this looks more like your thumbs and the base of your palms. Why in the world would I leave such weird handprints? You know why? You left them when you went to adjust the scarf after putting it on. Just like the model in this drawing. Whoa! Why did you just admit it, Mr. Newman? You did put the stage costume on, didn't you? 
And you really do like Biswit's clothes, don't you? Uh, fine! I meant to play the customer! But I don't like girly clothes! Man! Wow, only 10%. Okay, this will take us a while. Yes, new information to plug in. Time for another update. I suck at knowing the customers in there. My heart was. Ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. A lot of stuff happened here. My heart was pounding even though I'm a guy. So he's happy, sad, or fearful, and shocked. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on here. I don't even know where to begin with this. Then I saw it. I was even more amazing than I imagined. And he's super happy about that. I was like, whoa, I'm a guy, but I got all excited. He's like, I'm, I'm, I don't even know where to begin with this. This is, this is all over the place. It's true. I did put on the girly clothes. And he's happy, but he's still sad or afraid? But it was strictly for artistic purposes, and now he's angry. I, I don't buy that anger. Got it. Like, all that just doesn't make sense with the anger. Okay, maybe it does make sense. I, I don't know. I mean... Mr. Newman, this emotion is inconsistent with your testimony. What are you talking about? Is that true? My only message is that's a hundred full stuff in here! Yikes, I wouldn't really call that an emotion. Wonder where I went wrong. Well, better try that again. Bring it on! Million times a billion, I don't care! So I don't know how to do Arnold Schwarzenegger. He'd probably be great for this guy. I snuck in, knowing the custom was in there. So more like Sylvester Stallone than Arnold Schwarzenegger. I can't do Arnold. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not good with voices. I just like to do them because of fun. But I never said I was good at them, okay? <laughs> All right, where do we begin? Uh, there's a lot of stuff happening here. So my heart was fighting even though I'm a guy. And uh, this was a new piece of information here. And why is he a... Well, he's probably... Why is he afraid, though? Because he likes it? Mm. Got it. There, another mushroom that doesn't fit. Okay, cool. Maybe I'm getting better at this, like subconsciously. So what? You really started to get my nerves, man! Mr. Newman, you got excited when you put the costume on. But you also felt sad. Who cares if I feel sad? It's no big deal! Okay, Mr. Newman, out with it. Why did you feel sad? You see, that's the one thing I don't like about the Moon Matrix. It could be sad or afraid, and those are two different emotions. And I think it would be better if it was just one emotion, you know? You're hiding something, aren't you? Oh uh, no! You're not fooling anyone anymore. Now tell us why you are sad. Okay, fine! We're gonna be that way, I'll tell you! The reason I feel sad is, is, is! No matter how much you dress up, I'll never be as pretty as Juniper. Well, no offense. But his habit of shining at the top of his lungs doesn't exactly help. No, that's not it! I totally own those dirty those colored clothes! I should've been totally pretty! But, but, there's something that keeps me getting in my way! Wow, that's a whole lot of anger and emotion right there. His heart is kinda in pain. His emotions are out of control. Out of control emotions. We saw those during the Ninetales Evel incident. So all we have to do is find the source of his uncontrollable anger, right? Right, help me look for a conflict between the statements and the images we see. If we can find that we can wrestle him away from whatever's tormenting him. Mr. Newman said that there's something getting in the way of him being pretty. Something that doesn't go with girly clothes. But what could it be? Fine, I'll just find me in! Wow, this is gonna take forever. Maybe that's maybe that's like the entire trial with her though, considering she Whoa. Whoa. I second know the costume was in there. My part was pounding even though I'm a guy. It's true, I felt a powerful feeling when I saw that long curly scarf. I admit it, I wore girly clothes. 
I felt like a diva when I pulled the hood over my head. I felt so right. I was totally dressed up like a girl. Well, what's causing anger? Is it his braces? Got it. That's what my initial thought is. Mr. Newman, you feel a great deal of anger to your brace, don't you? Yes, I am right about that. Is that true you feel is holding you back from being as pretty as you think you should be? What? <laughs> Mr. Newman, the truth is, you really want to take that brace off, don't you? No way, man! This is some masculinity! I never take it off! Is that you can't take it off, or that you don't want to take it off? Oh man, I should get my big mess in. This is really weird. He exhibits intense anger towards his brace, which he calls the symbol of masculinity. But he can't take it off, not even when he's trying to look pretty. What could be at the root of his complicated relationship with his brace? I have a feeling we're on the verge of uncovering an earth-shattering secret. Uh, Dino, are you okay? It seems Robin is still hiding a secret, a big one. Bigger than the fact that he's secretly jealous of Jimbo's look? Is it because he's female? And he's just dressed up like a boy? Yes, at least I think so. No, it can't be. I just thought of something, but it's totally insane. Mr. Newman. What? I'm on to the secret. And if I'm correct, it's not very little at all. It's huge. This sounds completely insane, but it's the only possibility left. Hey, how about that? That's exactly what I just said like five seconds ago. I love it when I figure something out like five seconds before they tell me. It just makes me feel, it makes me feel, I don't know if it's smart because I'm on the right page or really dumb that I didn't figure out earlier. Uh, but there's no health bar, so why don't we go through these other options? I always like to go through the other options when there's no health bar. When there's health bar, I got it, got it, kind of got it, sick with what it is. You want to be pretty like a girl. Robin Newman, you want to be pretty as you feel. That's right! And I'm never gonna get age! I'll show you how real my cost is! You will. Now. Athena, we already know he likes to draw cost dress. This line of discussion is a dead end. And yet, he can't take that symbol of masculinity off. Even when it clashes with his ideal self-image. Wait, could this mean? You hate girls. What? What? What gave me that idea? Oh, uh, then what? You like girls? Uh, I refuse to answer that! Athena, you're not asking just out of curiosity, are you? What? No, no, of course not. Better try something else. You are a girl. Mr. Newman, or should I say, Miss Newman. You are, and always have been, a girl. What? Have you lost the plot, Athena? No, I'm completely serious. I don't have any direct evidence. But that's what Robin's heart is shining out loud and clear. Hold it! I still think we totally lost it. I mean, Robin's reeks of testosterone. How could he possibly be a she? I, for one, have never seen a girl who shouts like a maniac all the time. Oh, 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 oh! I've seen plenty of witnesses in my day. But if he's a she, then she's the most convincing actress I've ever encountered. Therefore, let me pronounce my verdict. Robin Newman is without question, a man. Oh, 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 You are now truly just as donors equal in one area. You are just as equally insane. Never in the history of this planet has there been a finer specimen of the masculine spirit.
If you guys are done talking about me! All the dots. <laughs> the braces are off. Ah, the place, it's... Oh, dang, she's pretty. Seriously, she's really pretty. Hey, but Robin, you know, you do you, buddy. I ain't gonna judge you. But man, you're really pretty. I don't even know what to do. Do I still give Robin the same voice? I mean, obviously now she's cast off the disguise. And it would really do well for my voice to not give her that all yelling kind of voice. So she doesn't seem to be yelling here either. Ah. Miss Sykes. No, allow me to call you Athena. I wanted to keep this a secret at all costs. But no. W what? No way! Gang! Ah, surely this must be some kind of jest. <laughs> nope, it's for real. I'm a girl, body and soul. If you don't believe me, I'll give you a P E E K. Uh, she, uh, you're a little underage, okay? As if. Ha 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 ha. Ooh, she's got a jovial side to her, a little prankster side. What an amazing transformation. Well, all the Discord is gone. The image is not complete. Bye-bye. I was raised a boy since I was little, and I studied law just as my parents wanted. But now, this living lie that had me pinned on the ground, it's... Ah! Ha. Ha. It, it's been blown to smithereens by you, Athena. Now I can stop pretending I want to be a prosecutor. I'm going to be an artist. Yay. <laughs> order, order, order! What a shocking development! You really did turn out to be a she! Eek! Why is everyone looking at me like that? Teehee, I feel like a movie star or something. But no paparazzi, please. I value my privacy. O K A Y. Bye! No pics, you'll regret it, man! Am I just imagining things, or is Robin even more hyper now than when she was a he? I don't know. Maybe it's because she finally got her troubles off her chest. Literally. Now this is all well and good, but does he mean is she actually change anything? The fact that the witness is actually a girl does change things. Because there is now a piece of evidence that we must reevaluate. Hmm, very well. Let's see what the defense has for us now. What well, piece of evidence must we reconsider now that we know the witness is a girl? That's a really good question, Mega Man. Uh, hoorah. This one. A woman can be heard shouting or a goner. Because, if I remember correctly, uh, Athena, <clears throat> not Athena, Juniper was the only one that was a woman here because there was three people. Her, uh, Robin and Q. So now that we know Robin is a girl, the fact that a woman is heard shouting you're a goner could be attributed to her. Take that! This is what I'd like the court to reconsider. Oh, the tape recorder, the one that recorded the threat you're a goner. That's right, and we have already established that it's a female voice in the recording. Of all the students who could have moved the body before the mock trial was to start, our client was the only female if you exclude Miss Scudderbutt because of her alibi. And that is why the tape recorder made our client the prime suspect. Ah, uh, so then... That's right. The witness just revealed that she's a girl. Therefore, 
if we are using the voice in this recording as a basis of hurling accusations. This witness must be labeled a suspect too. Oh! Oh no! I like this music in the background there. Wow, talk about a sudden turn of events. You've done it. You found a hole in one of the prosecution's key pieces of evidence. Yeah, but wow, that was a lot of work for a single one. Objection. Not so hasty now. You're forgetting that only one person here was privy to the suspect. Ergo, Miss Juniper Woods is still the prime suspect. Objection. But Miss Newman hid the fact that she was a girl, but that the crime scene in a court. I'd say that puts her in camp suspicious. Eek! That's not nice, Athena. How can you accuse me of being a killer? I mean, I'm just a weak, innocent little girl. Just thinking about that murder makes me... Objection. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hmm, as suspicious is as suspicious does. Undoubtedly, the witness does have some sort of connection to this crime. Perhaps our newfound lady is merely feigning ignorance as well as just feigning faintness. We can surmise that she lent support to the principal offender, Juniper Woods. By leading Miss Scuttlebutt to that body, that would make her an accessory to the crime. Ha! Man, that's, 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 uh, hmm. So he just wants everyone to be guilty, doesn't he? How can you say that? I'm not an accessory to any crime, Mr. Birdman. <laughs> Mr. Birdman, I love that. Objection! But Birdman? That's a great nickname. Birdman! I don't know if anyone remembers that old cartoon. In any event, with the witness as an accessory, it explains quite a bit, does it not? Objection! Ark, you made it all make sense somehow. And you'll keep accusing Junie unless we can show someone else knew the script's details. But how could someone have gotten their hands on that kind of info? The only way they could have known what was in the script was if they, uh, had penned us all, heard it from Junie. Like a teacher. Sorry, Junie, but you're not going to like this. Our client may have leaked the script's details to someone. Ah, what the devil. And I know I shouldn't have, but... I revised the script to favor the prosecution. But Professor Court noticed it immediately and changed it back. Miss Woods did not want Hugh O'Connor to win the Hamak tire. That's why I believe she leaked the details to the witness, Robin Newman. Oh, really? I wasn't I wasn't going there, but okay. I get it. If Robin won, he wouldn't be able to confess to Juniper. Right. Juni was probably trying to keep the friendship from being awkward. <laughs> How good do you think that? What a bunch of bow! I I I never heard a word about the script from Juniper! Never ever! You sure? Can you look me in the eye and swear that you didn't? B A D Athena. You don't have any evidence! Ah! <laughs> Jeez, hilarious. Gah! Actually, we might have just a thing. Really? Yeah, one of Robin's lines I read when we were reenacting the mock trial. Here's a shot of the crime saying, Ironically, it was Professor Carr to pose as a corpse. Air for head. How did the Mactail participants react to this photo? Mr. Newman was surprised what Professor Court was wearing. Why would she be surprised? Robin said, Oh, the green sweatsuit. S U R E. I might have said that. But, 
So what? Well, I'll take it this way, Athena. Yeah, uh, which way exactly? If I told you that I'd be wearing a blue suit today, but then showed up wearing what I'm on now, what would you say? Um, oh, the red suit. Ah, I think I've got it. And I've been saying that. I know I've been saying that. I know it's been a while since I've been recording, but I remember saying that like multiple times that there was something wrong with her, uh, with her outfit, right? Your Honor, we have evidence proving that Mr. Min knew the contents of the script. The defense was to present said evidence to the court. Very well, Miss Six, present away. This evidence proves that Mr. Newman has quite out to the script's contents. It would be the script itself, right? Um. Victim's outfit will be a red one from the prosecutor course. Take that! The mock trial script? Mr. Min. During the mock trial, you were shown a photo of the victim's body. And reportedly reacted by saying, Oh, the green sweatsuit. Oh, um, yes, I said that. But, like, what's your point? You seem to have some issue with the green sweatsuit, and I think I know why. The proof is in the script, specifically on the Things to Prepare page. Sweatsuit. Victim's outfit will be a red one from the prosecutor course. Ah! You were surprised because the sweatsuit in the photo was green. But if you didn't know about the script's content, then you shouldn't have surprised you. In light of a privileged knowledge, I'm ready to declare Mr. Min a suspect, Your Honor. You would? If no one's script details makes me a suspect, then there must be others beside me. I mean, someone else could have also seen Professor Court's note. Note? What note? The professor and Juniper were working together to prepare for the mock trial. But only one copy of the script was made to prevent it from being leaked. But that gets kind of inconvenient, right? You're not seriously going to suggest. Eek! But it's the truth! Professor Court did do exactly what you're thinking! She didn't write down any of the proceedings of the truth behind the case. But she did write a note to herself about the pops and details about the victims. B O D Y. Is this really true, Miss Newman? If you don't believe me, send the police over to my house. Tell them to check the pictures on my camera. I thought it might give me an advantage. So I took a picture of the note. Hmm. I say she's telling the truth. Wait a sec. If there's a note with details about the body, then that means... There are others who could have made the murder look like our script kind script. Well, yes, I believe you're right. Huh. Apparently, this case isn't as clear-cut as Pascal Blackwell would have us believe. This new revelation blasts a big fat hole in the prosecutor's case. Oh! Objection. Bully for you, Missy. But don't think this spells victory. And why not? The battle is still young, and my blade is now fully drawn. Between it and my next witness, your life will be forfeit. So put away your wooden sword. And show me what you are truly capable of if you wish to live. You want it? Don't worry, I'm gonna bring it. You go, Athena. I right, who's that? Oh, great. Yeah, oh, the deeds. I already said, I want nothing to do with this trial. How juvenile. It's not a matter of what you want, for you will cooperate, Hugh O'Connor. 
Prosecutor Blackquill, why have you called a witness? You will recall that the day before the mock trial, in short, the day of the murder, the accused testified that she left for home at around 6 o'clock p.m. Well, yes, my notes here do confirm that fact. Right, our client wasn't at school at the estimated time of death, so she couldn't be. Objection! Yet, that was a felicitous lie. Or am I mistaken, golden boy? I have no attention of saying anything more. Now, if you'll excuse me. Cold. I am not through with you yet. Huh. It seems the real prosecutor has it out for me. Leave, and we might just discuss you know what. Ack! No, no, wait. What? What secret does he have? Well, not a statement, Mr. Kalus, is it? What's that all about? I, uh, changed my mind. Earl Stein testify. Hmm, are you sure, Mr. O'Connor? Heh. <laughs> the word of a genius is good as gold. Let's get on with this. Hugh O'Connor. A senior at the Miss Legal Academy lawyer course. How's that? Uh, you just find your testimony then, if you would, uh, please. You're up against the top of the class now. I'll be careful for you. I know Jenny would never lie like that. That Papa schoolboy won't know what hit him. What is testimony? Around the time of the murder. To get mentally prepared for the mock trial, I meditated at the archery range till 7 o'clock p.m. At around 7.15, I went to the main building before going home. Well, that's when I saw Juniper. We didn't say as much as we passed by each other. She seemed her usual self. Well, that's it. Anything else you'd like to ask? I'm pretty sure that's not the voice I gave him. I'm pretty sure I gave him more of a... Well, this is kind of like how we tipped. But you know what? I try to make it more distinguished sounding because that's how he votes. Yeah. I don't know. I just go with my gut. That is quite enough. Well done, golden boy. Heh. <laughs> the final bell rings at 7 p.m., at which point the campus is a desolate place. Now, you will recall the tape recorder. We know the time of the voice recording. It was 7.10 p.m. the day before the mock trial. That was the dark hour of this heinous crime. Did you have any proof of that? As its final bell, the school plays a special broadcast when the clock strikes seven. The female voice on the tape appears 10 minutes after that broadcast. The killer waited until the school was empty to spring her devious and deadly trap. Tape record updated in the court record. A woman can be heard shouting your gun and recording in the art room at 7.10 on the 23rd. So uh, when the witness saw the defendant, that would have been... Indeed. It was five minutes after the voice was captured on the tape in the art room. Ergo, we know that the accused was still in the main building even after the killing. Hmm, so the time of murder and the time of when the body was moved? Great, another inconvenient testimony. Miss Sykes, your cross-examination if you please. Around the time of the murder. To get mentally prepared for the mock trial, I meditate at the archery range till 7 p.m. Hold it! So, um, do you meditate often? Heh. <laughs> Don't tell me you're going to start pestering me, too. What's that supposed to mean? No need to play dumb with me. Other girls want to know about my private life. What? I will remind that fans is a court of law, not a pig of spurt. 
Huh. It seems Miss Fancy Pants' lawyer is spitting with the witness. Objection! 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 I'm just trying to establish the witnesses. Huh. If you must know, I never go a day without meditating. Are you satisfied now, stuck a girl? That's it. You better take that. Whoa, whoa there, tiger. Just take a deep breath and relax. Heh. I just continue my testimony now, if you don't mind. At around 17, I went to the main building before going home. Well, that's when I saw Juniper. Our client has stated that she went home at 6 p.m. You and Professor Court were busy preparing for the mock trial together yesterday, right? Was that the last time you saw her? Yes, I left school at around 6 p.m. <laughs> no, wrong! I don't know what she was doing, but Jennifer was definitely at school after 7 p.m. Haha, <laughs> but I suppose neither side can prove one way or the other. Ugh. But if Jenny was there, that means she's lying. Truth be told, I only saw her for the briefest of moments. Mm, we didn't say much as we passed by each other. She seemed her usual self. So you just walked past a good friend, barely saying a word? Uh, the final bell had already rung. They get mad when you stand around chatting. Then again, we're not like you people, talking endlessly in those annoyingly loud voices. Objection! <laughs> annoyingly loud voices? I'd like it if you refrain from insulting my partner like that. <laughs> Normally I should add a junction right about now, but I'll take this one for the team. Aww. Heh. <laughs> anyway, I think that's about all I have to say. Hmm, that's it. Anything else that you'd like to ask? All right, I'll take you up on a kind offer. Oh, uh -huh. I expect as much, so go ahead and uh, ask away. Oh, uh, Mr. Connor, I wanted to ask you. Did you go to the art room? Why did you say past last spell? How did you prep for the mock trial? That one. Please tell the court what to return on October 23rd, the day before the mock trial. Heh, <laughs> well that's an easy one. Nothing in particular. Nothing at all? You didn't help with the preparations? Heh, <laughs> you don't get it, do you? I was merely playing the role that was assigned to me. Hmm, I left the preparations and the like to others. My job was to be mentally prepared. Jenny put her heart and soul into getting things ready while he just sat on his behind. Just to reiterate, I spent most of the 23rd meditating at the utter radio range. I didn't talk to anyone until the school closed at 7 p.m. I suppose a few archery club members did come and go while I was there. But you didn't talk to anyone? Not a single soul? Well, that's right. I did say a word to anyone till the final bell at 7 p.m. I see. This is crystal information. Please add it to your testimony. I don't know if you're bluffing, but if you are, you have a pretty good poker face. Do we have um, a newspaper clipping of him talking to Scottabot possibly? I didn't talk to anyone until the final bell. I've been meditating alone at the archery range. You really did talk to anyone? Well, I did exchange a few greetings. But uh, what does that matter? So he didn't have any conversations. The entire day. Methinks that claim is a little bit more scrutiny. But what should I do? Is there anything I should ask about in more detail? Um. Hold on. Actually, never mind. I got all the info I need. Heh. <laughs> My, don't we seem confident? I need to see if there's a newspaper clipping. Cotsis Quartz Planner. Wait a second. Meet with Hugh about that report yesterday. Important. 
That was on the 23rd. Okay, so it's not a newspaper, but it is the first thing I came across. I don't see any words on the newspaper, so it very well could be this. Because he met with court. Oh yeah, I'm on a roll today! I need to be more I need to be sick more often. No, that's a bad idea. That's a really bad idea. <laughs> so you sure you didn't talk to anyone on October 23rd? Are you sure about that? Heh. <laughs> I already told you. My word is as good as gold. Okay, then how do you explain this? And don't spare any details. Sorry, I've never seen that before. This is the Victor's Planner. She recorded all of her plans in great detail. Take a look at this page here. It reads, 23rd, meet with you. And important. Don't you find that interesting? <laughs> what? Where'd you get that? The keyword here is important. You say you were at the archery range all day. But you also said a few students came and went while you were there. That doesn't sound like a great place for an important talk. But the entire campus was buzzing with activity before the mock trial. Where could they have possibly had a private conversation? I thought about that too. But the situation changes after the last bell. What's this now? The witness stayed after the last bell. In order to have a private talk with the victim, am I right to Mr. O'Connor? <laughs> this is ins- Huh. As we go through all this yet again, I suppose you also have no evidence as usual. No, I don't have any direct evidence. However, the witness was meditating until after the last bell, and he attempted to conceal his private meeting with the victim. Heh. <laughs> First ramen, now me. Are you going to accuse next? You're just another unscrupulous attorney looking to get ahead. Don't let me get to you. He's definitely hiding something. I mean, he was supposed to meet with the victim around her estimated time of death. I had my sister's about Robin, but... Q seems just as guilty. These three are the only possible suspects after all. What if they all did it together? Mr. O'Connor, answer me this. Did you meet with Professor Court that day? All the dots. Sorry, Mr. Jailbird Prosecutor. I don't mean to steal your thunder, but I have uh, something to say. If it will save me some trouble, then by all means speak away. Uh, if you would recall, Miss Sykes, the voice on the tape recorder was female. Knowing that, I'd like you to explain how I could possibly be a suspect. Oh, he has a point. Ha, huh, impressive. Golden boy here does shine gold indeed. Care to take the reins? You're more than capable of prosecuting this case. Heh, <laughs> sorry, but I'm studying to be a lawyer. What a pity. To think such genius is to be wasted on me lawyering. Oh, he didn't like that. At last, your moment is here, Sykes Dono. Time to refute Golden Boy's statement. And prove that you're the young prodigy worthy of the badge on your lapel. Urk, could you lay on any more pressure on? The voice is unmistakable female, so there's no point in arguing about that. Yeah, you're right. In which case... To whom does the voice of the tape really belong to? Oh, I have no idea. Oh. You're a garner. I mean, we've been thinking that the you're a garner is the, um, is not the defendant. It could be the witness. I don't know. I, I, I don't know about this one. Uh, I'm... 
I I'm not gonna tell any lies here. My, my, uh, my, my streak ends here because I'm not sure if it's the victim or the witness. It's probably not the defendant. But then again, I'm thinking maybe the defendant just because I don't know any which way, and that's the most wrong one I can think of. Let's just go down the line. And if I lose health, I lose health. The witness. The voice on the tape is that to this witness. But I'm a man with a man's voice. All you have to do is open your eyes and ears. Objection! Then let me ask, did you know Robin was a girl all along? Arg. But that that's different. See, Your Honor, I haven't scored me, understand. Oh, yes, but it would have been nice if it had been due to a fact relevant to your rebuttal. I'm gonna have you score me for that. Arg! Now I know what's screaming at my stand. Yeah, I knew that was coming. The voice is definitely female, that much we know. In that case, to whom does the voice of the tape belong to? It's probably the defendant. Let's say the victim. The voice on the tape belongs to the victim. Now that's the only thing that makes sense. Objection! I knew I was completely wrong in this one. Did I say it's probably the defendant because I'm completely wrong? Yeah, I could just feel it sometimes. Are you mad? The voice of the recording says you're a goner. That is something a murderer shouts at the victim, not the other way around. Hmm. Yeah, that is a problem. You're a goner. You're a goner. You're a goner. Um, Athena, are you broken or something? You're a goner. You a goner. You a corner. What the heck are we doing now? Are we hoarding this? You a corner? Wait a second. We are hoarding this. Whoa, Dana, you're scaring me here. You're scared. I'm terrified for even coming up with this. With what? Plus, get a black quail. I want to know if I'm worthy of my badge. Well, I'm about to show you why. Despite my age, I can wear it with pride. Oh, then I can take it. You won't be changing your argument. Still, it stands that it's a bit odd for the victim to be the one yelling you're a goner. I agree, if that's what the victim was saying. But it's not. Hmm, I assume he has something in the back of your assertion, Miss Sykes. Not exactly. But you don't have to add fuel to his fire, your honor. If it is indeed Professor Sports' voice on that tape, then she was shining it because... She was being threatened by O'Connor. Your O'Connor was a threat, the witness shouted at the victim. As has been mentioned countless times, the voice in the recording is female. How the devil do you reckon it belongs to the witness? Oh, right. Huh. Oh, I misclicked that one. I misread that one. I'm confused, how you can be confused by that. So without further ado, apparently, I totally misread that. I'm sorry. No fair. Two against one. I meant to say that she said it to him. And I completely messed that one up. Um, so I thought being threatened by O'Connor meant that she felt being threatened by O'Connor. So she was scolding O'Connor. I would like to call one basic fact into question. Is that shout on the tape really saying you're a goner? What are you up to now, Athena? Professor Scott's planner says she was supposed to meet with the witness for an important talk. Perhaps our witness, despite being a genius, had done something wrong. And this way, Professor Scott get angry with him during the private meeting. I don't see how this changes what we heard on the tape. Well, if you want to see how it changes things, then let's try the experiment. Your Honor, I want you to yell at the witness as if you're mad at him. But, and this is important, use his full name. Okay, well, let's see. Um, uh, you got her! Huh, what did I do to de what did I do to deserve that? Yes, like that. Now try again, but faster. You got her! Huh? You, uh, Connor? You, oh, Connor? You a goner? Wait a second. No, no, this can't be. You think I spent energy to lead to this fire for was it true? Ah, uh, but it is, Your Honor. Humans are not perfect. That's a scientific fact. 
We sometimes mistake shadows for monster or the wind for voices. Hmm, now that you mention it. You can do this, Athena. Just give the old guy one more little push. The sound on the tape recorder never was a phrase here at Garner. That's only one we thought we heard when in fact it was a witness getting yelled at. The court will note that this is different from the selective hearing men are so good at. Hey! I think you're right, but what was that last part again? Never mind. The important thing is that voice was recorded is it our client. It says it was a victim, scolded the witness. You must now join the list of suspects. Huh. I had thought that testimony would suffice, but it seems it has come to this. I will not allow such fallacious quibbles to upend this case. The prosecution has one final piece of evidence to present to the court. Alright, well, I'm going to go ahead and stop here. Because he does say he has one final evidence. Uh, I thought I could get to the recess. But, you know, if I get to the recess within 10 minutes of the next video, we can always just keep going. It's not a big deal. And I didn't make a full hour. I am shocked. I am shocked, I say. Did have to meet myself a few times. But, hey, I hope you all have a wonderful, fantastic, amazing, awesome day. Here on our blind let's play of Ace Attorney Dual Destiny's Turnabout Academy. I will see you again very soon. And until then, so long and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter and you are brilliant and you are loved and you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.